As-salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen abad. Praise be to Allah the merciful. Peace be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First of all, on my behalf, we have the uh, IAT Masjid. We congratulate every one of you who's going to Hajj. And we hope that if you're not going to Hajj this year, inshallah, Allah will give you the chance to go next year, inshallah. Um, what we want to start with right now, because this is like ni'mah, uh, uh, bounty, adiyya, gift from Allah, Allah gave you. First thing you need to do is you need to thank Him for it. And how we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what He gave us, you make one sister. One sister. In this sujood, you thank Allah that He gives you hajj, inshallah. So what you're going to do now is you're going to make sujood and you thank Allah for his giving you hajj. If you're not going to hajj, make the sujood and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you hajj. Still early, you can get hajj this year, inshallah. Okay? Yalla, inshallah. Everyone make sujood for this ni'mah, inshallah. Jazakumullah. Okay, mashallah, with that done. Uh, Hajj, as you all know, is fault, an obligation. And people tend to get away from that word. They say, yes, it is fault, but according to my ability, which is true, it's condition. Hajj, you have to have condition to go to Hajj. You have to be healthy enough, wealthy enough. What I mean by wealthy enough, that you, uh, I don't mean that you have to be a millionaire, no. But you have enough money for you to go, to buy the ticket. Not only the ticket, you have enough money for you to stay there, eating, drinking, sleeping, buying necessary stuff, also, you have to have enough money to leave for your family to spend from while you are gone. If you have such an amount of money, which is enough, I said enough, then you have to go to Hajj. You have to. And what makes me afraid that Hadith, which is a the scholars spoke about it like that Umar ibn al-Khattab, the Khalifa, second Khalifa. You know Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, Hadrat Umar radiallahu anhu. During his time, once he said that I was almost, he almost ordered or commanded his police his people, his shorta, his, his uh, 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 security people, to go around Al-Madinah during Hajj time and see who is rich enough and healthy enough and able to do Hajj and he stayed behind, didn't do it. You know what he said? He said, I will make them Pay jizya. Jizya means ransom. You know who pays jizya? Who pays ransom in Islam? The non-believer. The kuffar. Those are the ones who pay ransom. 
There is no one when he say that he means it. And he understands that it is strong obligation that you do hajj. And at the end of his saying he said, Ma hum bi muslimin. Ma hum bi muslimin. They are not Muslim. They are not Muslim. See how strong it is? That if you are able to do Hajj and you do not do it, then you need to do still fast. You need to ask Allah to forgive you. And the first minute or second you are able to do Hajj, just go for it. And let me tell you furthermore that Hajj and Umrah, if you want to be rich, do them and follow one by the others if you want to be rich. The Prophet ﷺ said that. Al-Hajj wa al-Umrah yamfiyan al-Faqr Like al-Faqr, poverty will avoid you if you always do Hajj and do Umrah. So if you are afraid that you will lose your job, do Hajj or Umrah. If you are afraid that you get laid off, they go from your job to Hajj or Umrah. If you are afraid that your boss is not satisfied with you and he will take you out, do Hajj and Umrah. Prophet said that. And also, Al Umrah in Al Umrah will erase the sins between, the mistakes you made between Umrah and Umrah. It will take away your denotes, your mistakes. And Hajj to Hajj is the same thing. So we don't want to go uh, uh, in detail about how good Hajj is or how Umrah, how good Umrah is. Well, this lecture is about how to perform Hajj and Umrah. Please, I want everybody to put that paper in the front of you and just listen to me. I'm better than the paper you have. I will teach you better than the paper, insha'Allah. Just I want you to pay attention. And it's strange thing, subhanAllah, you come into, if someone here make announcement about, uh, okay, we have a good sister and she's going to come and teach you how to cook biryani. All the sisters will come and every one of them will have a pencil in her hand and a notebook. If we tell the brother, brother, if you want to learn how to operate Windows 7 or Vista, we have a lecture. Everyone will come and still have a pencil and paper in his hand to write down the principles behind it and things to do. But subhanAllah, we're speaking about Hajj, which will take you to Jannah. And unfortunately, I don't see nobody has pen or paper to write down. I know, mashallah, you're good, you have good memory. Oh, except you, except, uh, yeah, I see some people. But where is the paper? You know that I will give you this paper. I, yes, yes, yes. Mashallah, you, yes, I see. Jazakum Allahu Khair. Our sisters, better than you. Mashallah. Hajj will take you to Jannah. How are you going to memorize how to make Hajj and how to make Umrah? I know they are in, in the internet and I know you are a friend of Sheikh Google and you are a friend of Sheikh Yahoo. I know you can ask and he gave you the answer but when you go there the real thing it's different. That's why the scholar said you do not even speak about Hajj or write about Hajj. Unless you perform Hajj. Now I see people, even Mashayikh, Imam, he knows, he has the knowledge. I don't say anything, but the scholar said no. Knowledge in Hajj is not enough. You have to go there and see how difficult it is to choose the easy one or to follow the Prophet What did he do here? What did he do here? What he did not do? And you, you have to pay attention to that. So you have to perform Hajj to speak about it or to uh, write about the Hajj. Anyway, inshallah, I will try to be as simple as I can. 
uh, if you want to write, you write whatever you want to write. Inshallah, will help you to uh, uh, practice that Hajj that Allah Khairan Brother Rasim is bringing pencil and paper. Mashallah. Good service, Mashallah. Uh, before you go to Hajj, of course, you have to have the intention. And let me tell you, before you do intention, you could not get the intention without the permission of Allah. We all think that we could get the visa. If we get the visa, then we go to Hajj. If we send, if I have the money and I send my passport to the embassy, then I will go to Hajj. That's not true. You could do all of this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not write in your book that you will go to Hajj. And what life happened with me one time. I prepared myself, I sent my passport to the embassy and my passport by mistake came out without no visa and I didn't go to Hajj that So Hajj visa first comes from where? From Allah. So you have to be in a good relation with Allah. When you make dua, you have to make it sincerely. You have to make it strong. You have to make it, yes, you want to go to Hajj, not, hey, oh Allah, please. Then you forget about it another year. No, you have to keep asking. Feel yourself. And then if the visa comes from him, Almighty, then everything else will be easy. Can I start now? Yes, you can. There is time. Yes, you can. Depend on your sincerity. Naya. First thing. Second thing on this Naya, why you want to go to Hajj? For people to tell you, oh, Hajj, mashallah, he went to Hajj, he's Hajji. Uh, now, Hajj is, 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 is like, like, uh, like a perfect, they call it perfect, right? It's something you put like Mr. Doctor, title, yes, Jazakallah, right? Of course, you're not a doctor, and people don't call you no Mr. or no Miss, so you would like to have Hajj before your name. And even when you sign, you say Hajj Muhammad. You want to have that, and that's your intention, for well, you can. But we need to fix our niyyah first. We need to make hajj, perform hajj just for Allah. I, I want to see al Kaaba. I want to see the places that the Prophet was there, and the, uh, the people against him, how they used to fight him. I want to see those places. Those mean something to me. I heard about them a lot, but I didn't see them. I want to go there for that reason. I want to share that feeling. I want to make Islam reality too, especially in that part. In Hajj also, is, is a form of ibadah contains all the forms of Islam. In Hajj you spend, and you spend a lot. And you cannot say no. This year they, uh, they said, okay, you have to take the train. Before they used to charge, uh, let's say a thousand dollars. This year, after everybody applied, at the end, before you went, they said, okay, you have to pay two hundred dollars for the train. You cannot say no, you go and you pay the two hundred dollars. And you feel like good about it, even if you're spending. But if I stand here for one hour, I try to get a dollar from you, you don't do it. And had you spend to his feeling, you spend that you like to spend. Then you 200, you pay 200. 300 dollars for them, and you go rush and pay 300 dollars. All the tickets used to be a thousand dollars, and now 1200. You go and pay, and you go. And had you pray, we pray here. The direction is Al Kaaba. We don't see Al Kaaba, but over there you see Al Kaaba. Just looking at it, looking at it is a form of worship. And I want you, when you go there, just make a sign. Don't pray, don't make the speech, don't do nothing. You just sit and keep looking at it. Picture The time, say, okay, those 20 minutes or half an hour, just I want to sit and look at that. No pray, no, no, just look at it. It's exactly like looking in the Quran and you do not read the Quran. That's ibadah, a form of ibadah also. It is a form of ibadah. In Al-Hajj, you fast. Prophet ﷺ said, whoever makes Hajj, 
no mistakes, whether big or small, he will come back like his newborn. Of course, newborn with no diapers. I mean, you growing up, you know what I mean? Born again. I don't want to use that born again term, but that's what it is. You will come back clean. Your record is clean. SubhanAllah. You get, you, Allah will forgive you. To all forms of ibadah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combined it in Hajj. In Hajj, you remember al mawt In other ibadah, you don't. You don't look at yourself, only you look at everybody else. They were in two plus, five plus, and that's what we do with our deceased people. That's what we wrap them on. Right? So you remember that. Resurrection day. Hajj is like that. So it's a good experience. It's, it's a beautiful meaning when you go there and you use every minute of it. Uh, also, we were not going to take long time on uh, uh, saying uh, that, but we want to start right away, inshallah. People travel from here, and before you travel, people say, okay, I have uh, a debt. Do I have to pay them before I go? Or not, if you have dying on you and that dying you and install it, like I owe you some money. And then I already decided between me and you say, okay, I will pay you ten dollars a month. And you agree to it. And I will be able to pay that ten dollars a month. I can go to Hajj, even though I owe him uh, uh, thousands of dollars. It's no problem. What? will forbid you from doing Hajj as, uh, 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 as dying or uh, uh, you owe somebody some money. That's if this kind of money that you owe, you cannot give and you will not be able to give it if you go to Hajj. So it's either or. If it's like that case, then you don't go to Hajj. You pay your debt. You pay him his right first. Because Hajj is the right of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive. But my right, oh no, I won't forgive. I need my money. So you pay me my money first. And then if you're able to do it again, it's fine. You understand? That's what you do first. Uh, also, if you have between you and your brother, or you and your sister, like um, you don't like each other, you don't speak with each other for a long time. Before you go to Hajj, this is the time to fix up the relationship between you and your kinship. Try to do it. That will be a good Hajj, child. Then you start preparing yourself for Hajj. What you take with you and what you do not take with you. I advise you, do not take nothing with you. Everything is there. And you're not going there to stay. You're going there for a few days, so don't... If, when you go to Hajj, don't ask anything. You have your four, four brothers, only the, the ihram, which is two plus, make them two, double. Because you're going to need double, inshallah. That's what you have with you. Other than that slipper you have, uh, you get your toothbrush, I do not recommend. And I want you during Hajj time to use miswak. Once you get to Jeddah airport, you see people selling it that much for five riyals. I know you don't like the taste of it, use it as medicine. And use it like, like a course of, of medicine that the doctor told you to be on for 12 days. Okay, you went to the doctor, the doctor said, okay, take this bell with you, 12 days, take it. Before prayer, every, every time when you make wudu, just do this way. And that will help you, healthy way and a spiritual way. Allah will love you more. So you don't have to carry neither uh, uh, toothpaste or toothbrush. 
What else you take? Don't even take clothes from it. The clothes that you wearing, you're gonna go in the airport with. That's all you take. Over there, everybody goes and buys stuff like this, and they are there. Take your underwear with you because you're gonna need them after Hajj or before. Whichever you can. There is a laundry laundromat there. They can you can use it. Expensive though. You can wash your own coat, it's no problem. But take more than one set of underwear. That's concerning my brothers. My sisters, of course, in, during Hajj time, you wear normal clothes. Any clothes you buy. What I advise you with is a comfortable pair of shoes or two. Very comfy. It doesn't matter how they look. Even if they look like McDonald's shoes, it's fine, as long as you're comfortable. That's what you take with. Besides, take like five sets of clothes, if you can. Five sets, complete sets, hijab, tenabiyya, uh, what have you take them with. That's what you take. Of course, you can wash your clothes. You can take them off and replace them during Hajj time, it's fine. There's no problem. You can also take a shower during Hajj time. There's no problem clean yourself. You can specify it. I would like you to take like uh, as well with you something for the headache, something for uh, 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 for pain. If, if you take medicine, go to your doctor and tell him I will be away for two months or one month. He will prescribe for you enough medicine to take with you because over there, of course, each group of people they will have doctors, they will have people to go with them. It's fine, and they could prescribe for you. But medicine is there different than here. The amount of it, how much you take, the names of them. So you might not be lucky to find someone who understands that equation. So try to take your medicine from here. And that medicine you keep with you on the plane, beside your pocket, above your head. Don't put it in that underneath that plane. You keep it with you. You keep it with you. Also, I would like you to copy your passport. You copy your passport, the first page, which have your beautiful picture, and copy it twice. And the, the page has the visa to copy it also twice. And go to stables or uh, any place you can uh, demonate it and make it small. You don't have to make it big like that. Just try to make it small and put like a, a layer of plastic over it. Cheap, you can do that. And keep one with you all the time. Why you eliminate it? Because you don't need the water to make it uh, to go bad. You need it. And keep one in the hotel. In your bag where you can reach in the hotel. Because if any incident happens, any incident happens, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from whichever incident, but if it happened that here that people uh, were caught in the fire over there, everything burned. And they didn't have nothing. They went to the embassy there to tell them, oh, I need visa, I'm a citizen, I'm, uh, 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 I have a green card. You have to wait, because they have to find out. It takes time. But if you give them the copy, have your name right, then you get your replacement faster than So you need to have that with uh, with you, inshallah. Copy of your, uh, your passport. Uh, concerning the money, concerning the money, take as little as you can take. Of course, you go in with the group, the group will provide you with breakfast and lunch, and that's what you need. Breakfast and lunch, they serve it like Three o'clock. So after that, you're gonna eat like uh, yogurt or something at night. That's all you need. So you don't need much to spend here, but take some allowance money with you. What you need also, you have to calculate how many gifts you wanna buy, and then you get whichever money that you can buy gifts with from there to other people. But concerning you, you do not have to get. Uh, uh, take much money. Your money, 
You don't carry it with you all the time. You carry whichever necessary, like you're going to the Oka, I'm going to make shopping, I'm going to buy gold. Gold, of course, expensive. Then you have to have some money to buy gold. And they accept credit card payment. And they exchange it, your company will exchange it, with the same rate. So you can use the credit card. So whenever you're going to shop, then get enough money to shop. And leave the rest home. Don't take all your money. Because people go to hatch specially to, 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 to steal your money. They go for that reason. And there's teams, an army of them. And one time was an incident that we looking for a, a haddi, she lost. And we went to the, the police station and we found the jail there is packed. You cannot even put no one there no more. Then I asked the officer what happened. What was the hatch time? What those people said? Oh, those people are thieves. We know them every year they come. They come through uh, airport, they come through uh, 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 seaport, they come through everywhere. And they know them by name, by look, and they go pick them up. Act. So what you do is, you take enough money this way, if your money gets stolen, then you have other money there. Of course, all Hajji will cooperate and they will help each other, of course, if something like that, like that happened, but this is an, an advice. Now you're going to leave from here, inshallah. We have different rooms going different ways. I don't want you to make the haram from here unless you don't make a harm from the airport from here. But unless you go into, uh, if you are going to Mecca from here, you don't have to make a harm. If you go into Medina, you don't have to make a harm period. They say the brother that was going to Mecca, they go into Egypt first. Or they go from here to Chicago, go from here to Houston, and then from Houston to Dubai. And then from Dubai, then they go to Jeddah. If your destination is Jeddah, you have to make the Ihram before the plane lands, about two hours before the plane lands. So because of this and the comfortability of my brother and sister, what you do is you take your shower for Ihram home. We're going to come to that, inshallah. You take your shower home, with the intention of Hajj, with the intention of Umrah. You take your shower home with the intention of, of Umrah. And then you wear your normal clothes. Concerning my brother and sister, you can wear your ihram, is no problem. And then before you land in Jeddah, if you are on Saudi airline, they will announce that Mifat is after half an hour. Then at that time, then you make your niyyah for Umrah. Because when you make niyyah for Ihram, or the intention of Ihram, it is a full restriction. You cannot do certain things which will come to them. So what I want you to do, if you go to Dubai, you don't make ihram, you take your shower home, and you wait, you're riding from Dubai to Jeddah, before Jeddah, you say, okay, we will land in Jeddah at 2 o'clock, and now it's 12 o'clock, so what you do is, you go to the bathroom, and you take off your uh, regular, normal clothes, and you put the ihram. Don't take a shower in the plane. Well, it happened before. And believe it or not, I don't know, Indian or Pakistani brother, may Allah be pleased. He went inside the bathroom and started taking a shower. And the problem is that all the stewardess, they came out with towel and he's inside taking a shower, you don't care. And they're trying to just <laughs> wipe the floor and dry the floor from the water because it's very dangerous. You don't have to. Even if you did not take a shower, you forgot. You don't have to take a shower, you just wear your ihram and say the intention. No problem. Okay? That's what you do. So you don't have to wear your ihram from here. You wear your ihram before you land.